Um, our last presentation for this afternoon is uh, from Dr. Rugo of the University of California at San Francisco, and uh, she'll be presenting Sasituzumab Govtikan versus Treatment of Physician's Choice, Efficacy of Bitrope 2 Expression in the Tropic SO2 Study of Patients with her Hormone Receptor Positive, HER2 Negative Metastatic Breast Cancer. I think the lesson is always bring your jump drive, especially if your presentation moved days, so it's in the wrong folder. All right, there are the slides. Thank you very much to the tech team and everybody for making it work, and Kate, who's amazing. So we'll start now. <laughs> Good afternoon. On behalf of my co-authors, I'd like to thank the conference organizers and the session chairs for inviting us to present the efficacy analysis by trope 2 expression of sasituzumab govotecan versus treatment of physician choice in patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancer in the TROPICS O2 trial. Which makes it go forward? Left click. There we go. Those are my disclosures. Okay, breast cancer is a leading cause of death, cancer death in women worldwide. The most common breast cancer subtype is hormone receptor positive HER2 negative disease, accounting for approximately 70% of all breast cancers. Standard treatment includes sequential endocrine therapy with targeted agents, followed by sequential single agent chemotherapy, although combination chemotherapy is clearly used as we just heard. However, there are a few chemotherapy agents available in late-line therapy for endocrine-resistant hormone receptor-positive metastatic breast cancer, highlighting that this is a high, unmet clinical need for effective therapeutic options. Sasituzumab gobotecan is an antibody drug conjugate directed to trope 2, a transmembrane receptor highly expressed in all subtypes of breast cancer. Sasituzumab is approved for patients with metastatic triple negative breast cancer who've received at least one line of chemotherapy regimen in the metastatic setting where it improved progression-free and overall survival compared to standard chemotherapy. In Tropics 2 sasituzumab improved progression-free and overall survival compared with single-agent chemotherapy of physician choice in patients with pretreated endocrine and chemotherapy-resistant hormone receptor-positive HER2-negative metastatic breast cancer. Here we present the outcome results for sasituzumab versus TPC by trope 2 expression from the Tropics 2 study. Eligibility for Tropics 2 included patients with metastatic hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancer that had progressed after at least one endocrine therapy, a taxane, and a CDK4-6 inhibitor in any setting, and at least two but not more than four lines of chemotherapy for metastatic disease. Eligible patients were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to receive sasituzumab govotecan or treatment of physician choice, TPC, which included capecitabine, venerelbine, gemcitabine, or aribulin. Stratification factors included visceral metastases, endocrine therapy in the metastatic setting for at least six months, and prior lines of chemotherapy dividing between two and three and four. The primary endpoint was progression-free survival by blinded independent central review, and secondary endpoints included survival, response, patient-reported outcomes, and safety. In the previously reported primary analysis of the Tropics O2 study, sasituzumab demonstrated a statistically significant improvement in progression-free survival versus TPC with a 34% relative reduction in the risk of progression or death. Median PFS was 5.5 months for sasituzumab and 4 months for TPC, with a higher proportion of patients alive and progression-free at all landmark time points. In the planned second interim analysis, median overall survival was significantly improved with sasituzumab at 14.4 months compared to 11.2 months for TPC, a 3.2-month difference in median overall survival with a hazard ratio of 0.79 and a p-value of 0.020. At 12 months, the overall survival rate was 61% for patients receiving sasituzumab and 47% in the TPC group. Re overall response was formally tested based on the statistical testing hierarchy and by independent review was significantly improved for sasituzumab at 21 versus 14% for TPC with an odds ratio of 1.63 and a p-value of 0.035. 
Clinical benefit rate was improved at 34% versus 22%, and median duration of response was prolonged at 8.1 versus 5.6 months. We conducted an exploratory analysis to evaluate the impact of trope 2 tumor expression on efficacy outcomes in Tropics 2 Of note, trope 2 expression was not required to determine eligibility and was not a stratification factor in this study. Trope 2 expression was determined on primary or metastatic archival tumor tissue with a median time from tissue collection to study entry of 7.7 .7 months and was categorized based on an H-score with a range of 0 to 300, where the H-score represents a summation of percent staining weighted by staining intensity. For the purpose of this analysis, the H-score was grouped into less than 100 and 100 or greater groups, providing 40 to 60 percent of patients in each subgroup. In order to assess the activity in patients with very low trope 2 expression, the H score less than 100 group was further divided into an H score up to 10 and greater than 10 to less than 100 as two subgroups. A total of 85% of patients had a valuable samples for trope 2 expression, 88% in the sasetizumab group and 83% in the TPC group. Trope 2 expression was found in 95% of the patients with the valuable samples, with 58% having an H score of 100 or greater. Demographics uh, and uh, baseline characteristics in the Trope 2 evaluable population were generally well balanced across Trope 2 subgroups with an H score less than 100 versus the 100 or greater group, but and between sasetizumab and treatment of physician choice. As previously reported, 95% of patients had visceral metastases and 57% of patients had received a median of three to four prior chemotherapy regimens in the metastatic setting, and about 36% had received prior CDK4-6 inhibitors for more than 12 months. In the trope 2 H score less than 100 subgroup, median progression-free survival was 5.3 months for sasetizumab and 4 months for TPC, with a hazard ratio of 0 0.77. In the uh, patient group with uh, a H score of 100 or greater, the median PFS, as you can see, is 6.4 months for sasetizumab and 4.1 months for TPC, with a hazard ratio of 0 0.6. This data suggests that PFS benefit from sasetizumab is observed regardless of trope 2 expression level. Similar results were seen in the trope 2 H score subgroups with a cutoff of 10. Medium progression free survival was 5.5 months for sasetizumab and 4.3 months for TPC with a hazard ratio of 0.89 in the trope 2 H score group less than or equal to 10, while median PFS was 5 months for sasetizumab and 3.5 months for TPC in the group that had an H score of 10 or greater with a hazard ratio of 0.67. Again, these data suggest that sasetizumab improves PFS over TPC even in patients with very low trope 2 expression. However, due to the small sample size in this analysis, caution should be exercised while interpreting this data. Overall survival outcomes also favored sasetizumab over TPC. As we can see here, the median overall survival is 14.6 versus 11.3 months for sasetizumab and TPC, respectively, in the trope 2 H score less than 100 subgroup with a hazard ratio of 0 0.75. In the H score subgroup of 100 or greater, median overall survival is 14.4 months versus 11.2 months for SASE and, and uh, TPC, respectively. Overall survival was also evaluated in patients with a very low trope 2 expression. Again, overall survival benefit with sasetizumab over TPC was observed even in those patients with very low expression, with a median overall survival of 17.6 versus 12.3 months for sasetizumab versus TPC with a trope 2 H score of 10 or less and 13.7 versus 11 months for sasetizumab versus TPC in the trope 2 H score group of greater than 10. As with PFS, caution should be exercised in interpreting this data due to the very small sample size. 
When looking at the objective response rate across all TRIB2 subgroups, response to sesotuzumab was observed in all patients, including those with very low TRIB2 expression or an H score of 10 or less. There was one response in the group of 10 patients with no TROP2 expression. TROP2 expression did not impact the safety profile of sasituzumab, with less than 10% of patients experienced treatment discontinuation due to treatment emergent adverse events. There was no impact of TROP2 expression on treatment emergent adverse events of special interest, including the incidence of grade three or greater neutropenia, febrile neutropenia, and diarrhea. In this post-talk analysis of the Tropics O2 study, TROP2 expression was observed in 95% of evaluable tumor samples from patients with pretreated endocrine and chemotherapy-resistant hormone receptor-positive HER2-negative metastatic breast cancer. Favorable outcomes for progression-free and overall survival were consistently observed with sasituzumab over TPC regardless of TROP2 expression. Importantly, benefit from sasituzumab was also observed in the small group of patients whose tumors had very low TROP2 expression, including those with an H score of 10 or less. These data confirm the efficacy of sasituzumab in patients with pretreated hormone receptor positive metastatic breast cancer regardless of TROP2 expression. TROP2 testing is not required. In addition to these analyses, data on the effect of sasituzumab on patient reported outcomes will be reported in a poster presentation at this meeting by my colleague, Dr. Marme. We'd like to thank the patients, their caregivers, and families, as well as the clinical trial investigators and their team members, without whom this work would not have been possible. Thank you for your attention and patience. Thank you very much, Dr. Rugo, for that wonderful presentation. We will now take questions from the audience. The first question that we have is at microphone one. Uh, I'm Hamoud Abousin from Tunisia. Thank you for the presentation. Does the variability in time sampling could be a bias for the study? I think that um, the variability in time from sampling is unlikely to have created bias. One is if you have samples that are much older, you're gonna lose expression, not gain it. And two, trope two expression has not been shown to change a lot over time. It might go down over time, but then we would only amplify the response uh, on, irrespective of trope two expression. And a, a question online that's somewhat related. Uh, what percentage of the tissues assessed for trope two expression came from metastatic sites versus primary tumors? The median time from tissue collection to uh, the start of study was 7.7 .7 months. So that would suggest that a majority of the samples were actually from a metastatic site. Even if it was from breast, it was in the setting of a patient having metastatic disease. Thank you. Microphone four. Oh, nice presentation, Halligan. Um, we're living in a time when there are a lot of targeted therapies where it doesn't actually seem to be that important to measure the target. And I'm wondering, are there other things that correlate with trope 2 that might account for your data? Or is it simply that this is an interesting delivery mechanism for low doses of chemotherapy and that the target ascertainment really isn't that critical? It's a great question, and you know clearly we've seen uh, remarkable data that we'll hear a lot about tomorrow in a HER2 low disease in terms of how HER2 low status impacts prognosis. And I think we have somewhat of a similar situation with TROPE2. I mean, TROPE2 is so highly expressed, 95% of the tumor samples had some TROPE2 expression, that in that situation, it's not gonna be a determinant of response. Uh, but uh, in terms of what determines the response to any antibody drug conjugate now, I think that we don't know the answer. And whether it has to do with the toxin, there's clearly a component, uh, the drug to antibody ratio, the delivery, the linker, uh, all of these things are playing a role, as well as the expression of the protein that the antibody targets. And our final question from microphone three. Hi, Hope, and nice talk. So Jin Tan from Mississippi. Uh, I have a related question to um, the former uh, qu uh, question. That is, the, uh, why are we seeing uh, activity of those uh, 
uh, ADCs uh, without uh, expression of the biomarker. And uh, one of the uh, common theme we see among those uh, ADCs are, uh, if you look at the uh, Anher2 and also uh, Tudavi, and they seem to share a common theme, that is they have a cleavable linker, which explain they may release a lot of free payload, and uh, so to cause the so-called high bystander effect. Do you think that might be the reason behind the, you know, the fact that we are not seeing biomarker dependent uh, cell killing? You know, it's a great question, and we know that the bystander effect plays an important role in the efficacy of these new generation antibody drug conjugates, and I expect that it plays a big role for sasetizumab as well as it does for atrastizumab drugs to can, datopotumab drugs to can, um, et cetera. I think the uh, F effect is due to the membrane permeable toxin as well as some digestion of the linker in the circulation that contributes to some of the toxicities that we've seen. So yes, I mean, I think that the bystander effect plays a role, but in this case, we also have very high expression of trope too. Thank you very much, Dr. Rugo. And that brings uh, general session one to a close. Uh, so on behalf of Dr. Partridge and myself, we'd like to thank all of the speakers for their excellent presentations. Thank all of you for coming, all of you who asked questions and uh, wishing that you have an enjoyable time for the rest of the meeting. Thank you.